Logic Pro for iPad version 2.2 is here, and with it comes a whole lot of bug fixes and new features, one of which is probably the most requested addition to Logic Pro ever. Here's everything you need to know. Yes, that's right, MIDI Learn finally comes to Logic Pro for iPad in this update. This has got to be one of, if not the most requested feature from users, and I'm so glad to see Apple have added it. It's implemented really well here too, though in a very Apple move, it isn't called MIDI Learn in Logic Pro for iPad, it's called Learn MIDI. So I have my MIDI controller here, hooked up to my iPad and Logic Pro. If I want to assign controls to any of the buttons, knobs or pads on my controller, I first need to tap on the circle with three dots here in the top corner, and then select Learn MIDI. This MIDI assignments window pops up and any control that is MIDI mappable will be highlighted with these blue outlines. So to keep things really simple, let's say I want to map the stop button to the one button on my MIDI controller and the play button to the two button. I can do this in a couple of different ways. First, if I tap on start learning, then tap on the back slash stop button in Logic Pro for iPad, then tap on the one button on my MIDI controller and then tap stop learning. You can see the MIDI value sent by my controller here and what function that controls in Logic Pro here. And it just works. To map the play button, I need to hit start learning again, but this time I can hit the two button on my MIDI controller first, then tap on the play button in Logic Pro for iPad, and then tap stop learning. The outcome is the same, but it's up to you how you set these controls up. Either way works fine. But we're not finished yet. I've jumped ahead here and also mapped the stereo out volume slider to this knob on my MIDI controller. As it stands at the moment, the controls I've mapped are only mapped in this specific project. If I jump across to another project, nothing is mapped. Back in the first project, if I open the MIDI assignments window again, I can tap on the arrow here to open this menu. If I tap here, I can choose to switch this MIDI assignment from a pinned track assignment to a focused track assignment. This means the mapped control will work globally across any project in Logic Pro for iPad. Super powerful and amazingly well implemented, I've barely scratched the surface here, but I do have a full in-depth guide on Learn MIDI in Logic Pro for iPad on the way, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. Stem Slitter got a big upgrade in this new update. Not only have Apple improved the algorithm that separates each instrument into separate tracks, you can now also select from two additional instruments. Where before, Logic users could separate a mixed track into vocals, drums, bass and other, you can now also separate into guitar and piano tracks. Not only that, there are now built-in presets that allow you to quickly and easily create a cappellas. Tell me the war is over Tell me I'm going home A lie to me Tell me I'm going home Instrumentals vocals and instruments, and more. They've even added how long the process takes to the progress window, which 
is a really nice touch. I was genuinely really surprised at just how well the initial version of Stem Splitter worked, especially how good it was at isolating vocals. In fact, I dedicated my entire TikTok account to creating a cappella videos for a while there using it. This new updated version is somehow even better. Now this, this is genius. We've all been there, you're working on a project and you're about to record, maybe you're noodling around or just warming up, and somehow out of nowhere you absolutely nail that guitar solo or vocal run or whatever, but you weren't recording. So you have to go back and try and recreate that amazing thing you just did off the cuff, and it never really sounds as good as the one you failed to capture. Now in Logic Pro, as long as you've set the track up that you plan to record to and the track was playing back at the time, you can recover these recordings, even though you weren't actually recording. It's wild. Tap and hold on the record button, and in the menu that pops up, hit the flashback capture. Now any recordable sound that you were making while the project was playing will show up in your track as if you'd actually hit record. It's proper witchcraft and will come in really handy. If you find yourself working in larger projects with dozens of tracks and loads of track stacks, scrolling through to find one specifically can get a bit monotonous. Now with the newly added track search feature, you can simply tap the three dots above the track headers area, tap on search and select track, then use this suspiciously macOS finder style search bar to look up your track. Another really nice quality of life addition there. Another great quality of life addition, we can now normalize the gain of audio tracks. Double tap the region you want to normalize, then select Normalize Region Gain from the menu. In the next menu, select the process for normalizing either all equally, per track equally, or regions individually. You can choose whether to use peak or loudness normalization. Peak adjusts the overall volume of the audio so that the highest peak level in the recording reaches the target you set down here. While loudness adjusts the audio based on the perceived loudness, not the peak level, using loudness units relative to full scale or LUFs, which you can adjust here. Along with loads of shiny new features, Logic Pro for iPad version 2.2 also comes with a brand new sound pack. Now, while I was lucky enough to get early access to this new version of Logic Pro for iPad, I wasn't given access to the contents of this new sound pack. But what I can tell you is that it's drum and bass themed, a first for Logic Pro, and that it's a biggie. Expect a full rundown of everything included in this new sound pack in a video landing in the next few days. This is another really solid Logic Pro for iPad update, and I love that instead of working on showing headline grabbing AI powered features, Apple have focused on adding much requested features that the community really wanted, and they've refined existing popular features like Stem Slitter. Another absolute banger of an update in my opinion, and I haven't even had the chance to have a proper dive in and rummage around the release notes. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that coming up soon too. Let me know your thoughts on Logic Pro for iPad version 2.2 down in the comments. Hit the like button and the bell and all that other YouTube-y stuff while you're down there, and I'll see you in the next one.